Hello my friends. In the second part of Kinesis with Lambda tutorial, we're going to learn what is event source mapping and the different event source mapping parameters for consuming a Kinesis stream. If you want to learn the two different ways to consume a Kinesis stream using a Lambda function, which is shared throughput consumer or enhanced fanout, check out the first part in this playlist. When attaching a Lambda function to consume a Kinesis stream, you are in fact attaching an event source mapping and pointing your Lambda function to it. The event source mapping will read batches of records from the stream and invoke your Lambda function for you. It will also handle the pooling, checkpointing and error handling complexities which will allow you to focus on your business logic. A good understanding of the different event source mapping parameters will make you utilize your Lambda function and improve performance and error handling. In the next slides, I'll go over each parameter and explain how they work. It's important to understand that each shard in a Kinesis stream can be thought of as a separate queue with its own throughput limitations. Lambda handles this by invoking a separate concurrent Lambda invocation synchronously to read records from each dedicated shard. So by default, you will have as many concurrent Lambda invocations reading from your stream as you have shards. For example, in a 4-shard Kinesis stream, you will have at most 4 concurrent Lambda invocations by default. Bet size this parameter defines the maximum number of records in each batch that Lambda pulls from your stream and sends to your function. Lambda passes all of the records in the batch to the function in a single call, up to the payload limit for synchronous invocation, which is 6 MB. It's not a required parameter, the default is 100, and the valid range is 1 to 10,000. The event source mapping will collect records from a specific shard into a batch and only after it will invoke your lambda function synchronously with the batch it has collected. Maximum batching window in seconds. This parameter defines the maximum amount of time in seconds that lambda spends gathering records before invoking the function. It's not a required parameter, the default is zero and the valid range is 0 to 300 seconds. Before invoking the function, the event source mapping continues to collect records from a specific shard into a batch until one of the three things happen. It has gathered a full batch, the batching window expires, or the batch reaches the payload limit of 6 MB. In order to clarify the relation between batch size and maximum batching window in seconds, let's view the event source mapping configuration documentation page on AWS. On this page, you will see the following setting on both batch size and maximum batching window in seconds. When you set batch size to a value greater than 10, you must set maximum batching window in seconds to at least 1. What this setting means is that both parameters go together. If you'll define a batch size greater than 10, but the maximum batching window in seconds will be equal to 0, it won't produce any error, but it will invoke the lambda function as soon as the event source mapping receives a message from the stream. This is not an expected behavior and not a good practice, so just remember that those two parameters go together. Starting position. This parameter defines the starting position in the data stream from which to start streaming. It's the Lambda service responsibility to checkpoint the sequence number of the less successful processed record. It's a required parameter and the valid values are latest, trim horizon and add timestamp. Let's go over each value and understand how it works. Setting starting position to latest will start streaming just after the most recent record in the shard so that you always read the most recent data in the shard. In case the lambda is new, it would read all the records in the stream which added after the subscription to the stream. Otherwise, 
In case it's an existing lambda, it will read messages from the last checkpoint. Setting starting position to trim horizon will start streaming at the last untrimmed record in the shard, which is the oldest data record in the shard. In case the lambda is new, it will read all the records available in the stream. Otherwise, in case it's an existing lambda, it will read messages from the last checkpoint. Setting starting position to add timestamp will start streaming from the position denoted by the timestamp specified in the timestamp field. Starting position timestamp is only valid in case starting position is set to add timestamp. Parallelization factor. This parameter defines the number of concurrent lambda invocations for each shard of the Kinesis stream. It's not a required parameter, the default is 1 and the valid range is 1 to 10. In the diagram, you can see what happens in case you increase the parallelization factor from 1, which is the default, to 2. Each shard is being processed by two lambda functions in parallel. If we look at this diagram, which is a closer look at a specific shard, we will see that the event source mapping will collect three batches from the shard according to the parallelization factor. One side effect is that ordering per shard is no longer guaranteed, since the shard's messages are split into multiple subgroups based upon an internal hash. However, each parallelized shard contains messages with the same partition key. This means record processing order will still be maintained and each parallelized shard must complete before processing the next. Tumbling window in seconds. This parameter defines the duration in seconds of a processing window. It's not a required parameter and the valid range is 0 to 900 seconds. Tumbling window allow performing near real-time analytics on your streaming data. This is done by something that would otherwise require the use of an external data store. It allows you to retain the state of your lambda function between invocations in a specific time window. When the tumbling window is enabled, additional attributes are automatically added to the lambda function input. Window start and end defines the beginning and ending timestamps for the current tumbling window. State is an object containing the state returned from the previous invocation in the same time window, which is initially empty. The state object can contain up to 1 megabyte of data. Is final invoke for window. Indicates if this is the last invocation for the tumbling window. It only occurs once per window period. Is window terminated early. A window ends early only if the state exceeds the maximum allowed size of 1 megabyte. It's important to mention that the aggregations are performed only within a single shard and you are not allowed to have concurrent batch processing with parallelization factor if you enable tumbling window. Filter criteria this parameter allows the consumer to filter events before the lambda invocation. It filters messages before the invocation of the lambda function. This helps reduce requests made to your lambda functions, may simplify code and can reduce overall cost. It's not a required parameter. It accepts a list of filters. There can be up to five filter patterns by default. You can filter by the metadata fields, such as partition key, or filter by the data fields found in your record payload. The event source mapping filters the messages that it receives from the source before batching, and only then it sends them as the payload for the function invocation. The event source mapping ignores filtered messages and treats them as successfully processed and the iterator advances past the records that were sent via the event source mapping. That's it for the second part of my Kinesis with Lambda tutorial, event source mapping application parameters. 
In the next video, I'll go over the different event source mapping parameters for error handling and I'll explain the different errors that may occur. Check out other videos in this playlist to learn more about using Lambda with Kinesis. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. I hope you enjoyed and it gave you value. If you want to learn more on AWS and all types of coding related stuff, please consider subscribing. Thanks, see you in the next video.